Good morning and welcome to this week's edition of Encompass Live. I am your host, Krista Porter, here at the Nebraska Library Commission. Uh, Encompass Live is the Commission's weekly webinar series where we cover a variety of topics that may be of interest to libraries. We broadcast the show live every Wednesday morning at 10 a.m. Central Time, but if you're unable to join us on Wednesdays, that's fine. We do record the show as we are doing today, and it will be posted in our show archives for you to watch later at your convenience. And I'll show you at the end of today's show where you can access all of our show recordings. Both the live show and the recordings are free and open to anyone to watch. So please share with your friends, family, neighbors, colleagues, uh, anyone you think might be interested in any of the um, topics we might have in Encompass Live. Uh, for those of you who are not from Nebraska, the Nebraska Library Commission is the state agency for libraries here. So similar to your state library. So we provide services and training and resources and databases and grants to all types of libraries in the state. So you will find shows on Encompass Live for all types of libraries, uh, public, academic, K-12, uh, corrections, museums, archives, historical societies. Uh, really, our only criteria is that something to do with libraries, which is a big <laughs> encompassing uh, topic there. Uh, book reviews, interviews, mini training sessions, demos of services and products, all sorts of things. Um, we sometimes have Nebraska Library Commission staff that come on the show to talk about programs and resources and things we have here through the commission, but we um, bring in guest speakers as well. And that's what we have with us today. Um, joining us today is Audrey Welber. Good morning, Audrey. Good morning. Thank you. And she is joining us. She's at the uh, Princeton University Library, and she's going to talk about a program that I've seen her. I've seen presentations and agendas and whatnot for this for a few years. <laughs> um, the personal librarian program that they have going there at Princeton um, University Libraries, and um, tell us about um, what, what's um, how it came to be, what it's all about, and what's going on with it now. So. Um, I will hand it over to you, Audrey. And I don't know if you want to ask your question uh, that you were talking about earlier right off the bat or? Um, I'll wait until I get to the next slide for okay, that. Go ahead, um, so thank you so much, Christy, for having me, or Krista, sorry, yes. <laughs> uh, for having me do this. Um, I love talking about our personal librarian program. And I plan to uh, talk about it in chronological order. So the way that things have unfolded <clears throat> up to the present time, um, there have been a lot of changes. So I think that would be interesting for the audience. And I'm also going to go into a fair amount of detail about the back end or the technical side of things, because I think um, that really has impacted the success of the program at mm. Princeton. Um, okay, so what is a personal librarian program as I've formed it at Princeton? Um, every single undergraduate at Princeton is paired with a member of the library staff, and we're calling them personal librarians, whether they're actually uh, functioning as librarians in our library system or not. So it could be a support staff member who has an MLS and who's very interested in providing research support to students. Um, we consider it to be a form of non-threatening support uh, and encouragement. Uh, a, a person at, from OCLC came up with the um, phrase, which I really like, that librarians possess the superpower of unconditional support. And that we do, yes. <laughs> yeah, it sums it up very well because we're, we're non-threatening. Mm -hmm. Students can just come in, even if they're just stressed, they can come in and talk to us um, mm -hmm. and not feel intimidated. Mm -hmm. um, it's, it's a teaching opportunity for the personal librarians because it's, you know, you're teaching students in every reference or research interaction, you're actually teaching students how to do research. And um, as I said before, there have been a lot of changes in the program mm -hmm. uh, that have been really due to word of mouth. Uh, and you'll see what I mean by that. It's been an evolution. And in that evolution, I will emphasize that we've had many pitfalls and so I'm going to show you I'm going to divulge 
the pitfalls that we've encountered and how we have managed to recover from them, okay? So before I go any further, I wanted to find out from each of the participants which of the following categories you fall in. You already have a program like this, you're seriously considering a program like this, or you're just curious about it and you might be interested in pitching it to your uh, organization. Mm -hmm. Yeah, go ahead and type into the questions section of your GoToWebinar interface and let us know where you all are at um, um, in this, uh, possibly do you do having personal librarians at your libraries. Kind of a, why are you here? <laughs> So we got a couple of people saying they're curious, just curious about the program. Um, yep. One person said they are considering it. Uh, of, as usual, you know, got to deal with administration and see what they think about it too. <laughs> I don't know if there's anybody. Um, oh, here we go. Oh, oh, here's an interesting um, aspect, a uh, way of coming at it. Um, we are a small public library, so in essence, I am a personal librarian to many patrons. So I'm just <laughs> curious because we can how to improve on this possibly. So they might not have a staff of other people to assign, but is there better ways to be a personal librarian? Yeah. And one of our community colleges is looking at starting up a program like this. Um, oh, great. Here in, in Nebraska. Nice. Okay, so is that about everyone? Yeah, that's about, um, yeah, pretty much. Yeah, so I will say that the personal librarian program is really doing nothing new in the way of providing librarian services to our students. It's, mm -hmm. it's a packaging, it's a marketing mm -hmm. uh, thing. Yeah. I, I will kind of emphasize that because, um, I find that students nowadays don't really know what a librarian can do for them. So you have to brand it in a different way. And this seems to have um, fit the bill. So I'm, I'm now gonna start talking about how it evolved, okay? How it started and then evolved. Um, a colleague of mine and I took a trip to Yale and we learned early on that they had a personal librarian program only for first and second year students though. But when I found out about this, I thought, wow, this really would work at Princeton. And, and the reason why I thought that immediately is because um, we, we had noticed that sophomores seem to fall through the cracks in terms of their connection with the librarian. Mm -hmm. um, and what I mean by that is first year students in the expository writing program were connected with a librarian in that context and then juniors and seniors also had their subject specialist um, with whom they could connect but the sophomores were kind of left out of the whole um, explicit connection to a librarian so I thought oh this would be perfect that would catch the sophomores but it would also um, emphasize our presence to the rest of the undergraduate body. So uh, the administration approved it and we decided to begin as Yale did <clears throat> with just first and second year students. And uh, this involved uh, contacting the registrar's office and getting a spreadsheet of all the student email addresses and their class years and I thought about different ways of pairing the librarians and students. Uh, some of my colleagues suggested STEM versus non-STEM um, or by residential college, which is the, our equivalent of dorms. But in the end, it was too cumbersome to try that kind of a customized pairing at that point. So we just decided to do, to do it randomly, okay? And at first, we only involved reference slash subject librarians. We did not bring in um, non-librarians. 
Okay, so the registrar sent the undergraduate emails and names and class years. I assigned each person a librarian, and at the time, I think we had maybe 28 of them. They were recruited, I recruited them uh, to volunteer for this. Each personal librarian had a, a roster of about 50 to 100 students. I created a public facing page to advertise our personal librarian program so that students could go to the page and then log into our website and figure out who their personal librarian was. So um, that was through something called Drupal. So that's how that happened. And then each personal librarian would download a CSV file from the Drupal page that would contain their student roster. And at that point, they downloaded their CSV file with their students, and I instructed the personal librarians to use blind copy and just email this group of students. Um, so I'm sure you can all figure out why that wasn't the best way to go about doing this. It, at the time, it didn't occur to me uh, that this was not very personal. So mm -hmm. as could be predicted, these blind copy emails yielded a very low student response rate, mm -hmm. okay? Because they didn't feel personal. You're gonna mm -hmm. call a personal librarian program and it's completely impersonal. So we got such a low response rate. Also, after that first year when we, when I called for volunteers, I, I said, we're only including first and second year students. But then when 2018 came around, our second year, we wanted to roll in the new incoming first year students, which would then mean that the personal librarian program was expanding to the juniors at that point. So we started with first and second years, then the next year rolled in the new first years, so we were um, basically including the juniors at that point, and the subject specialist librarians felt that this was going to confuse students as to who their point person in the library would be, and mm -hmm. that, um, you know, it was overlap of effort, okay? And that, that's something I hadn't really considered, and I also wasn't explicit about my intention to roll in the, you know, uh, the next set of students so that eventually it would include all four years. So uh, there was there was a little bit of um, concern about that and some of the personal librarians dropped out because of this, because of both the um, overlap with the subject specialists and the oh. abysmally low response rate from students. Okay, so we weren't gonna abandon the whole thing. It, it was getting a little discouraging, but I thought, no, no, we're gonna keep trying to refine this. So <clears throat> instead of the blind copying method, I switched everybody uh, to Word, Outlook's mail merge. Now this, now we're getting into the COVID um, mm -hmm. period of time, so that mail merge was very cumbersome for many of the personal librarians because they were using their home computers, and we had all different operating, you know, different platforms, different operating systems. It was it was cumbersome, but it was much better from a personal standpoint because using the mail merge you could say hi Krista mm -hmm. I'm Audrey I'm your personal librarian so it, it was mm -hmm. much more personal and the students were you know much more likely to respond plus to overcome the problem of overlap with subject specialist librarians I emphasized to all the personal librarians to send two separate emails one to the first and second year students and the next one to the juniors and seniors which emphasized that they should contact their subject subject specialist because at Princeton juniors and seniors have to write long research papers a junior paper and a senior thesis and they really 
do need to be dealing with their subject specialists. So we, we had them emphasize that um, to their student rosters. And I, I also made sure that, you know, the, the personal librarians who had volunteered were fully committed to this. It, it Oh, I should point out at this point that um, each personal librarian had 50 to 100 students in their roster, but only about 10% of the students responded, even when we started with the mail merge. It was lower before that, but even when we started this more personalized approach, we still only had about 10% response rate. So if you had 100 students in your roster, you were only going to get 10 of those students responding over a whole year. Okay, mm -hmm. so not a heavy lift. Yeah, I was going to say, because that number did look intimidating. <laughs> yeah, yeah it, it looks intimidating. Just to give you an idea, right now I have 750 students in my roster. You know, okay, I get 75 students responding, but over a whole year, that's that's not too bad. No. <clears throat> so around 2020, I decided to include non-librarians, okay? Um, now, most of the non-librarians, so in other words, staff people that were not functioning in the Princeton library system as librarians, but all of them, I think, had their MLSs. So they were very invested in the profession and wanted the experience that this would provide them. And two recent personal librarians who have gotten professional jobs attribute their success to the fact that they were allowed to participate in this program, and I'm very proud of that. Uh, and then another thing I did, because I felt like the personal librarians really needed documentation to refer to now that the mail merge was a little more complex, and they also wanted ideas for the content of the emails that they were sending, so I created an internal personal librarian website uh, which had templates and documentation and, you know, very detailed instructions of how to do things. And I think you can all go see that if you'd like. I didn't include the link here, but it's just personallibrarians.princeton.edu. Personal librarians, all one word, mm -hmm. dot princeton.edu. Okay. So statistics collecting continues to prove um challenging but um we're it's getting better and better so i'm just going to give you a snapshot of my response rates so early on very very low in during the covid period it was you know even higher than 15 percent okay because students really needed support uh and then it's kind of leveled off a bit i have not put in last year's statistics yet and uh, feel free to ask questions as I'm going along, and and Krista will relay the questions. Mm -hmm. Yep. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Just remember, yeah. Type in anytime you have a question about something, you're wondering about something, um, you want more clarification, anything. Just go ahead and type in, and we'll grab them as you um, ask. Yeah, because I, I mean I'm probably going pretty fast here. Mm -hmm. um, so then, in from 2021 to 2023. I wanted to figure out a way other than mail merge to have the personal librarians send out the emails. You know, librarian, we're very busy. They didn't want to be bogged down with all this complicated stuff, and then there were problems, and they had to reach out. And so I discovered something that Princeton was already using called campus groups, which I absolutely love, and they were Princeton was already using it for communication across campus. So this was perfect, but it did require a little bit of customization for the personal librarian program, but our computing people were willing to, or the computing people at the university, not the library computing people, but the um, computer uh, office at Princeton was willing to work with me on this, which was really great. Okay, our our computing office is called Office of Information Technology, OIT. And then we also changed our statistics um, recording 
method to um, a spring share product, but we've since um, moved just this summer, just this month actually, we moved to something called Airtable, if anyone has heard of that. So we're mm -hmm. out of LibInsight into Airtable, but the people in charge of um, assessment in, in my library were willing to work with me on how to customize um, the statistics keeping for the personal librarian program so that I could actually see what questions had come in through the personal librarian program. Okay, so campus groups, I love it. I really love it. it it's very, it's much, much simpler than mail merge ever was. You can, um, you can share the emails that you send with all of your colleagues so that each personal librarian can get ideas from one another about how to frame their emails. <clears throat> um, those of us who are managing the program, we tag the student net IDs or email addresses with their personal librarian's email address so that um, the personal librarians can easily see who who's on their student roster. I can see which of the personal librarians have sent their emails or have not sent their emails, so I can send gentle reminders to send out their emails. We can see when students open their emails, so we can kind of gauge the catchiness of the subject line by how many students open the email. And um, for special events, uh, outreach events that I hold, you can also send an email to the whole undergraduate student body at once. So that kind of comes in handy. I don't abuse that. I just probably do it about once at the end of every semester to advertise um, all undergraduate events. And I'll show you in a second an example of that. On the left-hand side here, under sample emails, is an example of an email that I, I've sent. Okay, so I put a little cute picture of a dog with classes. Our mm -hmm. communications person made up this poster, which is cute and catchy. And it turns mm -hmm. out, by the way, that students react very, very well when you include a picture of an animal. And even more so if it's your own pet and you kind of talk about your pet a little bit. I, I think all of us would react well to that. <laughs> you know, it, you know, I know it, I would. it always surprises me because I'm thinking, you know, Princeton students are so serious. They just want to get right yeah. down to the, but oh my gosh, pet, pet <laughs> pictures have been a huge hit. And then on the right-hand side, here's an example of a campus-wide event I held called A Long Night Against Procrastination. Again, our communications person came up with this poster. And so I included that in my email to um, my personal librarian roster. And that event actually ended up being such a hit that um, we had to curtail it a little bit because it was too popular, if there's such a thing, which I don't think there is, but we ran out of food three times. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah, so, I'll, and I'll go into that in a second. So, in addition to the technical refinements and the sort of um, refinements involving clarity of the scope of the program to my colleagues in the library, I would say that we, after COVID, we shifted the emphasis to one of empathy and support, you know, academic support, of course, but also just kind of general support. And what that really meant was we we just decided to be a little less formal. I mean, if your style is formal, I wouldn't discourage you from interacting that way, but it just seemed like students were appreciating less formal emails with, like I said, pictures of dogs or cats or movie recommendations or whatnot, just sort of a nice way of connecting and showing our availability for support. Then the next thing I did was I started having lunches for the personal librarian so that we could all get together and talk about what worked, you know, different 
scenarios that happened, um, stuff like that. And that's that's where I found out about the animal pictures being a big hit. And then, uh, now I showed you the poster about the long night against procrastination, but we didn't implement that right away. That I think started in 2022. And I felt like the time was ripe for an in-person event. So as I said, over three, it was oversubscribed, over 300 people showed up. It was a truly invigorating, exciting atmosphere, but we did run out of food. I had to send different people out at like 10 p.m. to CVS, because in Princeton, really, there are no big supermarkets near the campus. So they ran to CVS and got cold brew coffee and cookies, you know, because I wanted it to be really festive and supportive. Um, so we, we did run out of food uh, three times. And it was from 6 to 11 p.m. on a Sunday night, which was three days away from the main deadline for written work at Princeton. So it was the perfect timing. And the fact that we called it a long night against procrastination, I think, made students feel very um, kind of comforted and welcome, mm -hmm. didn't feel ashamed about procrastinating. So it was really great. And we staffed it with personal librarians, but then also I contacted the Writing Center at Princeton and they supplied me with two writing fellows per hour. So that was really great because students could get help with writing and research. So that was, it was a hit, but we did have to kind of scale it back a little bit um, because the library actually felt like it was too, it, it was a little too much. Um, so uh, yeah, then we, we branched it out into two different locations and the science library at Princeton, they had a popcorn maker. And Ooh. I was absolutely enchanted with this thing because it was so popular. It seemed to eliminate the need for other types of snacks so that we could have cold brew coffee and popcorn with different toppings. And that would kind of solve the need for snacks. But it also just had this great smell that wafted through the library, which most people enjoyed. Some people didn't, but most people did. And um, it, it just seemed very festive, which at Princeton, you know, students are under so much stress. Every single student that comes to Princeton is like an overachiever and they, they really get stressed out. So this was just a nice, mm -hmm. a nice addition. So I lobbied for a popcorn maker for the main library and they agreed and it's sitting in my office <laughs> but we need it for the next event now the really cool thing that happened serendipitously is that this long night against procrastination um which was advertised on social media our communications department advertised it i think on instagram twitter i think instagram and twitter and um, the Dean of Student Services saw the Instagram post and reached out to me and said, wait a minute, we need a personal librarian for some of the athletic teams. Now, of course, just as I said early on, you know, it's all about branding and kind of marketing our services to a student population that might not be aware of what a librarian can do for them. Um, you know, the athletic team members already had a personal librarian, but this was a brand new idea that I got from the Dean of Student Services, which was to have one personal librarian for each of several athletic teams. So I offered to be the personal librarian for the football team and the basketball team. I think we started with the football team and then added men's and women's basketball, but the Dean of Student Services felt that the football players in particular, because of the demands placed on them athletically, that they could mm -hmm. use more support. 
So I decided, and my, my son also plays football. So I thought, hey, this is perfect. I'm into <laughs> it. So I added the entire football team and I was invited in fall 2022 to a panel for junior senior football players. And I presented the personal librarian program. I told them what I could do. I made little uh, football and, and basketball icons because we added the basketball team, I think, the year after. Mm -hmm. And when I send out my emails, I include the graphic, you know, just to personalize it more. And it was just absolutely wonderful. Like these students were so appreciative and so there was the possibility of me showing up to their practices sometimes or the these panel discussions but they could also tell their teammates hey go ask audrey for help she really helped me you know there, there was a word of mouth possibility now so um yeah when i was invited to this panel i i i told the students hey, my son plays football, so I'm really like invested in the whole football thing. And the coach who was there at this panel discussion invited my son to come by a practice, okay? So my son suited up in all of his gear and <laughs> showed up on the field. He was eight at the time, now he's 10. He showed up to the football practice and the football players, you know, threw around with him. Then now they knew him and I included a picture of him in the email. So um, in fact, last spring, one of the football team members said, hey, I want to meet up with your son and throw the football. I mean, it was just absolutely oh. lovely, <laughs> very personal and um, it was exciting to me. So how are we thinking about expanding? Well, we've already done this particular expansion, which was we added track and field wrestling and hockey. And the personal librarians are invited to the practices or team meetings. I recruited a couple of my colleagues who initially you know, felt that this was overlapping with their subject specialty um, link, but but they um, now felt that it wasn't a threat anymore. So I, I, I recruited them again, and they're happy to uh, engage with these athletic teams. And then something really great happened. The director of the Freshman Scholars Institute at Princeton, which is first generation low income students who attended high schools that might not have prepared them adequately for Princeton. So they come six weeks early to Princeton to get kind of a leg up on the academic rigors of Princeton, including mm -hmm. library research. So yes. I created an FSI cohort, which I am their personal librarian. And just two nights ago, I showed up to their dorm over dinner, they invited me to have dinner with them. And I talked all about library research. I taught them Zotero. I said, I'm your personal librarian for all four years. You can reach out to me. And, and it was just a nice, um, it was just a really nice connection. And um, I'm just excited about the possibility of these identity cohorts. It's just really working great. Now, here are a couple of student testimonials students rave about this constantly, but I just picked these out. A junior, um, yeah, said, I now realize how much time and effort I wasted in the past. All <laughs> Princeton students should take full advantage of this resource. Now, mm -hmm. he, just, he was just referring to the interaction with a librarian, but as I said, students don't really know what a librarian can do for them. Right. And the personal mm -hmm. librarian program just brought it to them like oh and I can contact this person it's my personal librarian so I don't have to feel intimidated or ashamed to need help the next testimonial was from a senior who was so stressed out that he had never even contacted a librarian at all he made it to his senior year in economics never contacted a librarian and of course I said you need to contact the economics librarian i i do not know much about economics though i can get you started but we spent about an hour just interacting i had cats 
because I'm a cat person. I had cats on my Zoom screen, and he, it turns out he was a cat lover. He said I would have a hundred cats if I could, and we <laughs> he just he felt so um, relaxed, and he he wrote to me. He said. Um, or he wrote to my boss, I think, my personal librarian, not only pointing me to resources and a subject specialist, but talking to her gave me confidence that I can do this. He was really stressed out, and I was like his last resort at the moment, but he, he gained a sense of confidence, which is my whole reason for wanting to have this program at Princeton. Um, future refinement. So there's something in campus groups, which is uh, this platform that we're using where um, each personal librarian can kind of have a bio and a picture and that's functionality that we had in the first system with Drupal and the downloading of the CSV uh, but we lost that functionality uh, when we moved to this new platform so it turns out that there is a way that personal librarians can create what's called a badge which is like a little bio so students can proactively look up um, their personal librarian and I mentioned the assessment we moved to a different platform other than uh, we moved away from Lib Insight now to this uh, air table and so we're going to try to gather statistics in a more targeted way we added the popcorn maker Graduate students are now asking for a personal librarian. You know, of course, they already have their subject librarian, but you know, maybe we can do something with that. Um, residential college or dorm pairing uh, for the possibility of in-person study breaks. Maybe we'll add the rest of the athletic teams, who knows? But uh, that's basically where we're at. That's my son. Uh, attending a football game because the football coach gave us free tickets to the games. <laughs> so, um, so it all it's all just a, a lovely thing that I'm very mm. excited about. It's those kind of things that, that it's, you know, just having the confidence to, to do anything. I mean, it, 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 like you said, the librarians being able, just being there and not, as you were talking about, it, I was thinking about, I used to work as a university librarian that a lot of the other people at the university that students interact with, like their faculty, their professors and whatnot, they they need to, to get something to them. You know, the professors need something from them. You need to do this test. You need to do this paper, um, and it it can be very uh, stressful, intimidating, um, and why a lot of people might procrastinate. Um, but librarians, we don't need anything from you. We're here for you. Right. Um, and we can help you with actually your paper, your research, or just like you said, just a, a social thing to be here. Um, I'm hearing lots of other, lots of libraries are doing more of those, lots, um, university libraries doing things that are not just academic related. Right. Um, having, um, you know, bringing the, the therapy dogs into the library during finals time, things like that. Um, right, right, right. Yeah, so this is kind of a hybrid thing. We're here to mm -hmm. support you kind of in all ways but academic support is one of the ways so you know they can just you know it's it's informal but helpful so mm -hmm. yeah yeah um all right so um does anybody have any questions um we've still got about 15 minutes left so any discussion questions go ahead and type into your question section or uh thoughts you have about how you would do this at your library um ideas, whatever. Um, so we have a comment from someone saying, um, this might be um, a way to get high school kids reinterested in the public library. Um, investing some time in them is difficult because I have another job. And this is a common thing we have here in our small rural um, public libraries. You're the librarian at the library, but you also hire the, you know, the, run the post office or do something else or, you know, um, but, you know, some of these tips could help them reach some more of them. Um, uh, here's a couple of questions coming in. Yes, are there times when you've been overwhelmed with so many students needing help at the same time? Oh, great question. <clears throat> so, how do you deal with that? <laughs> I guess the answer is no, because I kind of thrive on this stuff. Like, I, <laughs> I love getting bombarded with questions because thrive on chaos. <laughs> Pardon? 
thrive on chaos. <laughs> yeah, it, it just shows me that what we're doing is is working and it's needed. Um, but yeah. but mm -hmm. if I only had my personal librarian student roster, I would not be overwhelmed. I also run the collaboration between the writing program and the library, and mm -hmm. I myself usually have many, many writing students asking me for help at the same time. So mm -hmm. the combination of that and the personal librarian sometimes does get a little crazy, but I would never call it overwhelming. It's, mm -hmm. you know, and, and students are very understanding. If you say, oh, you know, I'm not gonna be able to meet with you until, you know, three days from now, does that work? Usually they're very understanding about that. Or I refer them to a colleague if I really can't meet with them and they're desperate and it's time sensitive. So yeah. I would say, no, it, it's never overwhelming. Yeah, I think it's, um... It's just the way it works at, at, a, at a university and or it would book at a public library too. you know, a certain time of day, you're going to have that influx of, you know, everyone, come, all the students that show up at the public library after school. And it's just what you do. It's part of the job. You deal with, you know, you, you triage the right, whole city, right. the situation. Um, and the same thing. Yeah. And you'll have those busy times, finals time, paper writing time um, when they'll be the, you know, everyone needs something now. OK, OK, let's figure it out. Um, and then I will that. say that Zoom, you know, doing it remotely has definitely helped streamline the scheduling, you know, um, you know, for, from both mm -hmm. the librarian and the student um, side of things, you know, definitely makes it easier and more convenient to not have to like, okay, not only do I have to meet with the librarian, I have to figure out when I can, how I can get there, when exactly. I can get there, rather than, hey, I'm in my room or at my apartment, let me just pop onto yep. my computer. Yeah. Yep, exactly. And and by the way, I get a lot of questions coming in over the summer when students are home. They oh, wow. like, you know, they they want to get a head start, you know, mm -hmm. for the upcoming school year or they're working at an internship and you know, sure. so the the remote communication that we all got very good at over COVID <laughs> definitely helps. Yes. I think a lot of the things that have changed in, in libraries and just in the way we do things in general has really um, made things a lot better. Um, yeah. And it's I'm glad that so many people are still sticking with them, like the Zoom meetings or yeah. things like that. Um, when COVID began, um, my my mom, her uh, book group, she had a reading group, they started meeting via Zoom because they wanted to keep in touch with each other and they still do it when it's bad weather or someone's out of town or something and they'll still they'll still do their in-person ones now sometimes but they can easily she has a regular sunday night zoom meeting now that oh, she just great. i know i can't call her on sunday nights because she's going to be on zoom with her friends that's <laughs> awesome and that it just makes great. something so much easier with people yeah um so if someone's saying yes this is awesome presentation i will share this with my administration this is someone at one of our uh, universities here in nebraska one of our colleges great. Cool. Yeah, and feel free to reach out to me via email mm -hmm. if you have any questions or. Um, yeah, and we do have another question that came in. And if you do have any other questions, get them typed in there. Um, we've got plenty of time. Um, is there any issue with confidentiality in this program? Anything we have to worry about? Um, oh, you mean like a student sharing something personal, like like a non-academic? I, I guess could you be a little more specific about that? Let's see this yeah 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 in what way i'm not sure yeah yes that's what they mean is something per still too go too personal yeah uh there there hasn't been uh, the one student uh, the economics uh student who was very um very very stressed out i mean you know he shared uh, how just how stressed out he was like uh, he was almost despondent but i mean i you know he didn't it didn't seem to present a problem. Like it, if it had gone any further than that, I might have, mm. I probably would have said, I think you need to go to the, um, you know, mental health services office or something. But it didn't really rise to that level exactly. Mm. But no, I, I'd say there have not been any issues with that. Um, too personal, yeah. yeah. That's good, yeah. And that's thing too. We do have resources that. Um, especially at university, the health, mental health care and whatnot, that when students do go 
it's just too much <laughs> there's places to send them to yeah uh, another question just came in um were you surprised at the benefits you benefits you received as a result of the program um like or for your son who is adorable by the way they say <laughs> of course so what about the benefits that you you know personally oh my gosh i mean it's I can't even begin to describe how elated I am that even for me, because, you know, we, we're busy, I've got a lot going on, and the fact that my work life has positively impacted my personal life mm -hmm. is, like, really great. Like, my, my son is just absolutely enthralled with these football players that he gets to meet and going to the games and he's a very very serious football player also and he's like mommy i want to go to princeton and i i said to him well you got to pay attention in third grade then buddy <laughs> uh but but yeah goal, like the goal to have but yeah <laughs> it's absolutely lovely i i'm surprised that it happened but i'm just um I'm so happy about it. I never yeah, it's on, it. like I, it's a very um, you know you had some choppy times and some struggles getting it going the program to make it work. Um, but then that's the thing too. If it uh, with everything I think that libraries do, um, you try something and it doesn't work. Don't just give up. Figure out right. the different way to do it. There's it's just because it didn't work that one way doesn't mean it's a failure entirely it just means well let's try something new let's try something else next year right um, and, you know and, this is still something we think could be good and you know we'll try and you know it might end up not working out at your for your library in the end totally but try different ways of doing it but um you know failing failing up is that one of the is that the phrase <laughs> failing up. yeah i feel like i feel like what was required of me was that i had to be very flexible and receptive Mm -hmm. to my colleagues objections you know like sure. <clears throat> rather than fight too hard and say no it's not going to interfere this is a whole different type of program than the similar i just had to say okay let me absorb the complaint and figure out a way to um ameliorate it mm -hmm. I, I i had to which was a little bit of a learning curve for me because sometimes i i'm too quick to um you know, argue. I, I just had to say, nope, nope, I'm going to take this objection and figure out how we can work with it to make mm -hmm. everybody happy. And thankfully, that's what happened. Everybody is now happy. They're in support of it. The administration considers this one of our great outreach mm -hmm. programs. So it all kind of worked out. And, and like you said at the beginning, this is work we're doing, we do anyways. It's part of yes. our job to be this. It's just, um, difficult it's the promotion of it it's just you know packaging it in a different way because so many times people yeah the librarians the, the students or in our communities the public libraries the citizens don't know what we what we do what's the purpose what can i come to the library for besides checking out a book right exactly <laughs> uh, or a movie or something and it's just re packaging what we're already doing and that's i think all that the librarians had to think about too we're not asking you to do something different just doing the same thing in a different way right and uh, i will add to that that was very well put i will add to that that you know for those library staff members who might not get to um meet with students you know have consultations around the student mm -hmm. research or just interact with students this was great because they got experience in a way that they wouldn't have been able to in their in the course of their regular jobs and yeah um, th that was a great um aspect of it um someone had a question too now about the you know this being a different way to do things um was there additional costs like that you had to worry about i know like the food for that one event but is there anything budget wise that had to be taken into consideration for this it was only the food for these events and the oh. popcorn maker <clears throat> but I, the the buying of the popcorn maker definitely saved money in the long run because we didn't have to buy pizzas and cookies. We could just have the popcorn maker with the different toppings. And then we got cold brew coffee. It turns out soda isn't really a thing anymore with students, at least at Princeton. So mm -hmm. 
after we stopped getting soda and just got cold brew coffee and the popcorn and ended up saving money from what it had been costing at the outset. Nice. nice. But yeah, that, that's really the only expense mm -hmm. I would say. Beyond what you already had budgeted for. I mean, this right. is just your time for your job is what you do. Yeah. 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 Mm -hmm. Um, another question popped in here. Is there an expected turnaround time you ask for in getting back to this with the students? Oh, great. Is there like a timeline schedule, like you must do something within however many amount of time? You know, um, no, we don't stipulate that at all. I mean, um, I think all of my colleagues understand that it, it probably should be like 24 hour uh, response response turnaround even if you say you know i'm out today but i can let's set up a meeting or they send their meeting schedule or link in the email and they would have blocked out the days that they can't meet so i would say 24 hours is kind of the expectation unless you have like an away a vacation message up on your email and um, then the student will know oh actually they're not even in i know i have to wait till they come back yeah yeah and then Make usually sure people do those out of office messages yeah yeah we usually in the out of office messages like if you have any pressing questions please contact so and so you know so um but no we don't stipulate any kind of a turnaround time or anything like that yeah. and sometimes it might just be a quick I don't have time today. I'll get back to you in another in tomorrow. You know, I'm yeah, busy. Yeah, I'm out. Exactly. You know, we'll 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 catch you up tomorrow with your you know, more in depth. You know, yeah. Now you know that said, I actually, uh, thinking back to the question about do you ever get overwhelmed, I will confess that during the very very busy periods when maybe you know I'll check my email at night on my phone, and there'll be like two personal librarian questions coming in sometimes i'll forget you know what i mean like i don't mark them as unread i'll just kind of look at them oh yeah i got to do that tomorrow then i'll forget about it so mm -hmm. there have been embarrassing lags <laughs> in my response wow. time but i'm trying to um get better at that and flag those emails in a certain yeah. way so that i <laughs> look at them things fall through the cracks sometimes yeah. especially when it's the busiest season or busiest time of year yeah um, I think most people are understanding, or if they're really concerned, they'll send another little message. Book right, book. right. <laughs> and just, that's always embarrassing. I'm like, oh my goodness, I can't believe, you know, I forgot. I've done that, yeah. <laughs> um, well, it sounds like, you know, when someone asked the previous question about being over um, benefits you received, it sounds, benefits you received, this has been an, a very fulfilling program. I oh, think. yeah. It sounds oh, like yeah. That that is just you know amazing that you can do this kind of thing and then it just makes you feel good. You know, like this is you're yeah, actually it, it helping does. people. It's 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 made a difference to these kids who've come in and say, um, kids, they're adults, they're in college, <laughs> and say, I didn't know what the library could do. I'm so stressed out, and you helped me. Right. Um, right. Yeah. And it's all about the branding because we've always been here for this, but when you brand it in a way that connects with the students, um, you know. You, it's it's going to have a further reach, much further reach than if it if we hadn't had this program. And it, it definitely is something I think that can be used by any type of library. I mean, you're yeah. an academic, but um, the one person mentioned using this in their public library to get connected with the high school um, kids that come in, um, or a school library, a K-12 yeah. school could do the same thing. Um, this is not a um, university specific type of program or marketing thing. I mean, anyone I think. Um, right and great and it's you know getting out to where getting in is something we talk about a lot in libraries is how do we bring in new users how right. do we reach the, people, the people that are not using the library yet but we know we could do something for them and these are some great tips and ideas um, for doing that in right. your in your university your school your um, your your uh, community yeah yeah and I think the the name personal librarian yeah. It's just good branding. I mean, we stole it from mm -hmm. Yale. Uh, they might have stolen it from someone else, but it's just good branding. Like the mm -hmm. students feel like, oh, I can, I have the right to reach out to this person because they're my personal librarian. Yeah. It's okay for me to, I, I'm not yeah. like, I don't know, sorry to reach out, sorry to bother you. No, exactly. stop saying that. Stop saying exactly. that. <laughs> 
I always hated that when when I was working on the reference desk at the university, and the first thing people would say so many times, "Sorry to bother you." It's like, this is what I'm here for. This is why I'm sitting at this desk. Stop exactly. <laughs> yeah, it's my reason for being here. Yep. Awesome. All right, we're almost at um, the top of the hour. Does anybody have any last minute desperate questions? Um, they'd like to ask of Audrey, uh, type in the questions section. We can get a few more in. Um, definitely reach out to her. There's your email that you can, um, with any questions you have later, any other thing you wanna um, pick your brain about doing this at your um, library. Um, I am going to, I'm waiting to see if any other questions come in. I'm gonna pull presenter control back to my screen here and do my little wrap up. But if you have anything else you wanna ask, go ahead and type it in. Um, we still will um, stay as long as it takes for you all to answer your, have any of your um, questions asked. Let's see. Um, we do have thank you, thank you. This is awesome. Um, a pleasure to hear about you and your program. Yeah. I agree, definitely. Uh, I was very, like I said, I've, I've heard, or seen different, you know, uh, you presenting about this in the last few years, um, I popped up there and I kept seeing it and I'm glad I was finally able to get you to come on to talk um, more about it to our audience. Yeah, um, what's the weather like in Nebraska right now, by the way? Today, it's gonna, it's humid and it's gonna be like 90 degrees today because we've Ooh. had a rainstorm just came through overnight. Oh. Um, and potential uh, for tornadoes this evening. Ooh. <laughs> That's we we did have a tornado warning in New Jersey, but we didn't actually have a tornado. But I oh, guess we we get yeah. them. Yeah. yeah, we have them. <laughs> it's the Midwest. It's 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 yeah. Um, but right now it's yeah, cloudyish out there, but it's still summer. Summer's still holding yeah. on desperately. I think. <laughs> um, all right, so um, this is the session of the event page for today. Um, I did, um, you had mentioned the um, URL, the personallibrarians.princeton.edu. Yep. Right. I will add this as a link to the event page here because okay. when I put up the recordings, um, this, will be this, this will be duplicated. Um, if you uh, use your search engine of choice and just type in Encompass Live, the name of our show, you will come up with a link to our main page and to our archive page. So here's our upcoming shows, but I said I would show you, um, today's show is being, is being recorded and will be posted here on our archive page. Most recent ones go at the top. There'll be a link to the YouTube video. Um, and I didn't know, um, were you gonna share the slides or, you, or not? We hadn't talked about that. Um, I can share them. Up I to you. Can, yeah. okay. All right, so we'll have um, the slides available as well. Um, everyone who attended today's show or and registered for today's show will get an email from me letting you know when the recording is ready. Should be by the end of the day tomorrow at the latest, as long as YouTube and GoToWebinar cooperate with me. Um, we also push out onto our social media. We have a Facebook page for Encompass Live. You see we post reminders about the show, your reminder to log in today's show, uh, announcing presentations. Um, all our previous ones that when the recording is available, we'll post out here as well. Um, we also put on with Twitter and Instagram account here through the Library Commission, and we use NCUMP Live as a little hashtag abbreviation um, for anything that we do out there. So if you like to use any of those th uh, social media things, go ahead and give us likes and follow us there. Um, and our show archives here, you can search for any topic you have wondering if we've done something, a show on or something particular. Um, you can search our full show archives. You can search all the shows or just the most recent 12 months if you want something very current. Um, that is because this is our full show and I'm gonna scroll down. I'm not gonna scroll all the way down because if you can see over here, it's a very, very long page. Um, these archives go back to when Encompass Live first premiered, which was in January, 2009. So I think this is for 16 years old now, <laughs> and we have all of our shows here. Wow. Um, so uh, do pay attention um, to the original broadcast date when you watch anything. Um, some of the shows will be fine to watch, still be good, useful information, stand the test of time, no problem. Um, but some things will become old or outdated. Resources and services may have changed drastically. Uh, links might be broken. Um, some things might not exist anymore. People might not work at the same place where they worked when they um, 
presented for us. So um, just pay attention to that original broadcast date. It's on every one of them. But um, this is things librarian, libraries do, keep things for historical purposes. And as long as we have a place to do that, we will keep them um, available. Um, right now, they're all on our Nebraska Library Commission's YouTube channel. So oh, let's go back to the top here. All right. So I didn't see any other last minute desperate questions come in. So I think we will wrap things up. You all have Audrey's email um, if you do want to talk to her later. Thank you so much, Audrey. So good to have you with us today. Thank you for having me. I had a good time. Awesome. Yeah, I think you're going to get a lot of libraries trying this out or using awesome. some of your uh, tips and tricks for how to do, the, do something like this at their own places. Great. Okay. Well, have a great day, everybody. Thank you all. All right. So that'll wrap it up for today. I hope you, these are upcoming shows, August, September dates. Um, I hope you all join us next week. This just got added to the calendar yesterday, so you might not have seen it. Uh, Sherm, Andrew Sherman, our IT person here at the commission, is going to talk to you about how to purchase computers for your library, making sure that they, they are good, current, um, have the right operating systems that you can use them for a long time. Um, so how to upgrade your computers. So if you're looking to buy new PCs or anything, new computers at your library, um, this is a good session for you to uh, sign up for. All right, so thank you all very much. I hope we'll see you all on a future episode of Encompass Live. Bye. Bye.